Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Alfred from Practical Code Academy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a card model. And the card model that we're going to create it together is going to be animated card model and also is going to be responsive. So this is going to be my main page. And this is the button that when I hover over it have some effect. And when I click on it, it will trigger this card or card model to be coming from the top to the middle of the screen, showing some information about uh, this profile card. For example, his name, uh, code, or whatever he's saying here, description, and some of the social icons. And also, he can have a button that he will view his profile. And also, you have here a closing button and that you can close the model. And as you can see, uh, it will be very responsive. This is in mobile devices. This is how it's going to look like. And also, we this is for very small mobile devices. We can switch that to the iPhone 6, and also we can get it in taller devices. Uh, there's five. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty much responsive. Uh, that's it for today's project. I hope you're going to like it, and uh, let's get started. Okay, I have the project folder here. It's just having empty files, the index, the main.js, the style, and it also also having here a couple of pictures. I'm just probably gonna use two pictures here for I having person one, person two, person three. It's it's whatever person you want to use and also whatever background you want to use. For that, I'm gonna open the whole folder with Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna start up with my markup file or the HTML file. I'm gonna generate a boilerplate. I'm gonna call it about me card. This is the title. Next, I'm gonna be linking my style sheet link style.css also adding my JavaScript file using the script tag and adding the source of main.js. For this project, I need font awesome for the social icons. So I'm gonna open my browser, search for font awesome CDN, and we can get the bootstrap CDN here. Let's refresh the page, something wrong with it. Okay, this is font awesome uh, version number four gonna copy it and add it to my HTML here using a link tag and then paste the CDN and I'm gonna word wrap okay for my body I'm gonna have a container so it's a div with a container class class container inside my container I need to add an overlay because let me show you here. For my the project that I'm trying to do, as you can see, when I when you hit this button, you see here the background get darkened, and this darken or dark color it's an overlay. So I'm gonna use a, a, a an HTML div here with a class overlay to be the the dark that will show or the overlay behind this card. I'm gonna have div with a class overlay. Okay, now I need to add my card itself. So it's also gonna be a div with a class of card. Inside my card, I have a close button. So I'm gonna be a button tag with a class of close btn. And I'm gonna give it the HTM entity times This is for the button. Next, I need to add the user image, which I'm gonna do image. The source here, notice that the images are inside a folder called images. And here is all the images. So I'm gonna put images, I'm gonna access this folder. And inside this folder, I'm gonna have person 
one. And I'm gonna give it a class of card img. Next after the image comes the card title. Let me put it side by side so you're gonna have an idea of what I'm trying to do here. So this is my image, let me toggle this. I added the image here, which is this image. I added the button, which is the closing button. Now I'm gonna add the H1 or the heading or the title here. So I'm gonna call it H1, John Doe. I'm gonna give it a class of card heading. After the H1, I have the paragraph here, which is a description or quote or whatever you wanna call it. It's a, it's a P tag. And notice I have the quotation, the double quotation opening here and the double quotation closing here. And this is actually a font awesome icons. So I'm gonna use an I tag for it, class. And it's FA, FA quote left. And let's see if I get it to spell it correctly. I'll open it with the live server. Yes, I get it here. This is the opening. Okay, and after this opening quote icon, I'm gonna add some uh, dummy text using lorem, press tab. And then I need the closing tag here, which I'm gonna copy this one. It's, it's pretty much similar. All you need instead of left, it's gonna be right. And after I added my description, I can now work on my social media here or social media icons. It's gonna be UL. I'm gonna give it a class of social list. And each list item is consists of, uh, of a link. In that case, that, that link is not going anywhere. You can put a hash here. And the A tag actually, let me put it down the knees like this. And the A tag here, gonna give it a class, social icon, link, let's call it link. And inside the A tag, I'm simply gonna, gonna put uh, an icon. In that case, I, which is gonna be class, FA, FA Facebook. Let me, Add this. That case is going to be FA, FA dash Facebook uh, dash square. Okay, next after the Facebook, I'm going to copy this LI three more times. Next is going to be uh, LinkedIn. After is going to be Twitter, and it's actually called Twitter dash square. And the final one is going to be the Instagram. I'm going to give all of them a custom class. I'm going to call it social dash icon. Just going to copy it and paste it in all of my icons here. And after the icons, I'm pretty much done. I need only to add this uh, view profile button. So I'm gonna add a button with a class of card, BTN and I'm gonna call it view profile. Outside the card, so this is my card here. I can close it like this. Outside the card, I need the button that's existing in the main screen here. So I can add this, which is a button with a class, I'm gonna call it about BTM. 
and I'm gonna call put the text here about me and that's it so it's a container an overlay for the background a card which is gonna be consists of all the elements of this card nested in it and finally we're gonna have this button here which is the about me button that's it for the markup let's see how it's gonna look like right now if I open it with the live server as you can see nothing fancy we need to work on the styling here and that's what actually I'm gonna do right now I'm just gonna crease it like this open it side by side and now I'm gonna open the style.css and the style.css the first step I'm gonna reset the browser default so I'm gonna do margin zero padding zero and box sizing it's gonna be zero okay next I want to get some uh, font so I'm gonna look for Google fonts and the font that I'm looking for is Josephine Sans which is this font here I'm gonna select all types of this font regular light and bold also I need another font which I'm gonna be using here which is called Mon Serrat, which is this one here, Montserrat. So I'm going to select it and select all the styles. And now I need to embed these codes in my uh, page. So I go for embed here and I'll take the import. I'm going to import it in my CSS and I'm going to copy the import here. And I'm gonna go back here and in the beginning I'm gonna import my fonts that I'm gonna be using here so I'm gonna edit view word wrap so now I imported the fonts that I'm gonna be using in this project I'm just gonna copy this for now because I'm gonna use this font families I'm just gonna put them here and I'm gonna comment them Now for the container class, which is my background, what I need to do, I'm gonna select the font family to be Josephine. Actually, I can copy it from here. Josephine Sans. After the font, I wanna set the height to be 100 of the viewport height. Also the width to be 100 of the view width the background itself I want to do URL and in that case I'm gonna access the images folder and pick the background image here which is background.gpg I don't want to repeat the image so it's no repeat and also I want to center it and I want it to cover which is the background size cover if we take a look right now here we go this is our background as you can see it's covered and it's it's filling the page next we need to to, to set the content here flex because we want to center the button which is showing about me this button we want it in the center of the screen so you can add display flex Justify content, center, align items, center. And that's gonna center everything. And by default, it's gonna look like this because it's, it's flex row. However, to see it better, I'm gonna select the card for now. And I'm gonna do display none. And as you can see here, we have the button in, in the middle of the screen because we're using flex and we align it to the center and we justify the content in the center. 
we want this container to be position relative because when we add the card we want to uh, make the card position absolute where the parent is a container having a position relative so it's going to be relative to the container okay now let's work on the overlay the overlay is going to be position absolute and it's going to be from the top zero left zero bottom zero right zero so it's actually covering everything uh, and now the background color is going to be the rgpa value oops we have zero we want a black color zero zero and the opacity will be 0 0.4 let's save this and now as you can see the background is a little bit darker than before and if you increase the opacity i make it 0 0.7 now it's getting more darker so let's just keep it 0 0.4 and now notice that this button here you cannot click on it because the overlay is in front of it to make it on front or bring back this button on front now i gonna select the about button which is this button here so it's called about btn and i'm gonna set the z index to one and that's gonna bring the button to the front and it's now clickable let's style it i'm gonna do the border two pixels solid which is white color also the background color just the background it's going to be transparent next the padding itself is going to be 0 0.75 rem top and bottom and 1.5 rem left and right okay for the color it's going to be white for the font size is going to be one rem and also for text transformation i want to make it cap capital letters text transform that case uppercase let's add it for any button in my page i'm just going to add the general here general styling button i want the outline to be none and the cursor to be pointer that's going to be for any button in my page also for any link in my page i want uh, the text decoration to be none we also can add border radius which in that case i can add 10 pixels like this let's make it 15. next i want to have when the user click on it i want to have some effect on it and in that case i'm gonna do dot about btn active so when the user click on it i want to transform translate the y axis to pixel let's give it a try as you can see here when i click on it it's go down a little bit two pixels that's nice animation now for the card i'm just gonna put it down just gonna cut it from here and i put it here for the card i'm gonna do the if i take this out it's gonna mess everything out but i want to take it out of the context of the document itself so i need to do position absolute and now this is actually is not part of the flow of the document since it's position absolute i can do display flex and also the flex direction it's going to be column and align items it's going to be center width 400 pixel background color for the background i need to use two colors where I'm going to use the gradient. So the trick will be linear gradient. 
and I want the first color, let's say 333, which is dark gray. And the second color is steel blue. And if I do it this way, this is the normal wave gradient. It just start with a, with a dark color all the way to the steel blue. However, I want it to not, there is no transition. To do that, you can simply get at 50% here. So the gray will take 50%. And if you just add any value to the blue here, as you can see now, it will have this line here. So this is the two colors. And to make it the, the, the diagonal line, all you need to do is just set the angle that you want here. In that case, I want the 20 degree angle. And now I have this diagonal line, which will look nice. Okay. Notice that this button here is in front of our card. To put this button back, I need to do Z index of this card higher than the Z index of the button. So I'm going to put three, and now it's actually behind the card. Let's do the border radius, which in that case, I'm going to do 15 pixel. Okay, give box shadow of zero pixel, zero pixel, and 20 pixels. RGPA, and in that case, the opacity will be seven. Okay. Also, I want to do the overflow to be hidden. That's it pretty much for the wrapper card. Now I need to work on this closing bind. So I'm going to do close. PTN, I want to also position it as absolute. And since it's absolute, I'm going to give it a width of 30 pixels, height 30 pixels. And I can set the top and right, which is top 10 pixels, right 10 pixels. Let's see how that look like. Okay, that looked much better. Also, the font size here, I want to set it to 1.5 rem. I want this X to be a little bit bigger. Okay. The background color of this button is going to be transparent. Also, for the, for the border, it's going to be two pixels solid white color, which is FFF. For the border radius, it's going to be 50%. Okay, that look good. Now I want to have some hover over effect here. When I hover over this bind, I also forget to, to I, I want that this is not black, I want it white. So the color, also I'm going to set it to white. Yeah, that look much better. So when the close, PTN, the pseudo class hover. When it's hover, I want to set the background color to be RGBA and 0.7. Let's see. Yep, it's working. However, I need to add some transition. So the transition, I'm going to add it here. Transition background color and I'm gonna give it 0 0.3 seconds now I have my transition also gonna give it the same effect we give to the about button which is the active when it's active which is gonna translate it to Y two pixels down so when the user click on it give the illusion that it's going down Okay, that's it for the bind. Now we're gonna work with this image. So I'm gonna do card, image. And I give it a width of 200 pixels, height 200 pixels, and border 
radius 50%. Okay, and also I'm gonna do object fit cover. That will align the image good inside the this border radius. Also, I'm gonna do margin top, margin top of let's say one rem. Good. Actually, let's do margin top and bottom. So it's just margin zero. Good. Padding for the image eight pixels. And now I'm gonna give it a border of two pixels, solid and white. Now you have this like a border line since you give the batting here of eight pixels. So now that this is the border and you have the batting and this is the image, which is look actually very good. Also gonna give it a box shadow. Zero pixel, zero, zero, 50 pixel, RGPA. And I'm gonna give it opacity of five. This is give like the shed over here. Now I need to work in the card heading over here. So I'm gonna select my card heading class. And I'm gonna give it a font family. In that case, We use Joss uh, Sans, so I'm going to use the Montserrat. Okay, this is for the font family. For the font size, I want to use 2 rem. For the font weight, I'm going to use 700. For the text transform, I want it to be uppercase. For the color, I want it to be a white color. I'm gonna give it a little spacing too of three pixels. I'm gonna give it a background, a linear gradient background, which is gonna go Dodger Blue from Dodger Blue to uh, I'm gonna just to 0.9.3.F.7.5, like a dark blue color. Oh, oops, I misspelled Dodger blue here, and I forgot the comma. Okay, and this is the background here. And by default, it's from the top to bottom, but I can change that by typing to left. So I'm gonna go from the right to left. Well, <clears throat> I need also to give it a border of one pixel solid white. I'm, for, I'm missing the padding, which is gonna be top and bottom 0 0.25 rem, left and right zero. I'm gonna give it a width of 70% of its container. And also I need to text align center Now it's exactly in the middle. Gonna give it a box shadow of five pixels, five pixels, 10 pixel, and the RGPA of 0 0.7 opacity. That's gonna give this shadow to this title. Also, I wanna do like a Transform here. I'm going to skew this heading. So I'm going to do transform. And I want to skew on the x axis with negative 10 degrees. And it's going to look like this. Now I need to give a little bit spacing to margin bottom before the paragraph, which is margin bottom. Do one rem. Perfect. Now Let's take a look at the HTML. For the paragraph here, I didn't give it a class. So I'm gonna give it a class here 
called para, which is short for paragraph. I'm gonna save this. Now for the card paragraph, which is para, I'm gonna do font size, one rem. For the color, I'm gonna do like a white, but it's not like, like a very light gray, which is DDD. The width is going to be 85% of its container. Also, the text align will be justified. And now the, the text will be justified. The margin bottom will be 2 rem. To make this icon here bigger, so I can target this by card para and then target the eye tag, which is either of them, either the, 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 the opening quotes or the last or the ending quotes. Both of them are eye tags. So I'm targeting both of them. I'm going to make them the color white. Also, I want to do the font size. I want to make them bigger, which is 1.5 rem. And for the font style, I want them italic. And I'm going to create the position absolute. Since they're going to be absolute, I need to, to put the card paragraph to position relative. Okay. Now, for the first letter here, I need to push it a little bit away from this icon. I'm going to do the card paragraph. I'm going to use the first letter pseudo element or pseudo selector. I'm going to do margin left 40 pixels. And it's going to push it a little bit to the 40 pixels. But now this icon also needs to go a little bit up. So I'm going to select it, which is card, para, and now the I, which is going to be the first child, because this is the first icon inside the paragraph or nested inside the paragraph. And I'm going to be top. And I want to push it a little bit to the top, let's say negative 10%. Okay, that looked perfect. Well, also for the last one here, I have to give it a little bit margin and push it a little bit down. Also, I'm going to target the same way card para which is the paragraph i'm going to select the i tag that's it's the last child i'm going to do margin left which is going to be 10 pixels also the bottom will be negative 10 percent i'm going to push a little bit down And it needs to be refreshed because sometimes it, when it, while it's loading the font awesome library, now it looks good. Okay, now let's work on the social list. And for the social list, I'm gonna do list style none to get rid of all these bold points. Next, I want to display them as flex, which is the five content, space around. Just refresh it a couple of times. Here we go. Here we have our icons here. However, we don't have the space around because we didn't give it a width. So we need to give it a width, in that case 50%. I don't, need, I don't know why the Font Awesome library is not loading like this. Okay, now I have them. Also, I'm going to do margin, bottom, 2 rem. Fresh it again. Okay. Let me close this. Let me open a new one.
There we go. I have my icons here. Now I'm going to style the links themselves. So I'm going to do social link. And each of them will have a width of 35 pixels, height of 35 pixels, border of one pixel solid white, which is FFF. And now we actually can cannot see that they are taking 35 pixel widths or height. The reason for that, because it's an icon and it's an inline element. So you need to change the display and instead of inline, you can just change it to anything else. In this case, I'm gonna change it to flex to be able to center the icons. And notice once I change it to flex and instead of inline, all the icons now and I see the widths and the height. Now I wanna justify the content to the center. Also, oops, center. Also align items to the center. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna do border radius. In that case, five pixels. And that's pretty much it for this part, for the social link. Now I need to uh, target the icons themselves, which is the social icon. I have to make it font size, make a little bit bigger, which is 20 pixel. Did I call it social? social icon. Let's give it a color of white. Okay. Now when I hover over them, I want to have some effect. So in that case, once I hover over the link itself, I want the link to have a border with a blue color, the border change. So the social link hover pseudo clash. I want the border to be one pixel solid Dodger blue. Also, when I hover over the the link, so I'm gonna do social link. Oops, this is actually need to be link, not list. Social link, when I hover over it, I wanna target the social icon. So each icon, I wanna give it a color of Dodger blue as well. And also I wanna transform it on the Y axis. I'm gonna push it a little bit up Right now, just changing color. I'm gonna push it a little bit up and scale it, make it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna do transform, translate Y. In that case, negative two pixels up and scale 0 0.9. Okay, now I need transition because this is gonna happening so fast. So for the link itself, I'm gonna give it transition and it's gonna be transition for the border because I'm only changing the border property with 0.3 seconds. I'm gonna copy this. And for the icon itself, as you can see for the icon, we're doing two transitions. So I can do all instead of border for all of them. As you can see now, it's, it's, it's getting smaller with a nice smooth effect. That's it for the social icons. Let's move into the profile uh, button, which we give it a class of carved BTN. For the carved BTN, we're gonna do the widths, 10 rem, height, three rem. 
the margin bottom, 1.5 gram, and the font size of this card will be 0 0.75 gram. Let's save it. That's a good. Let's actually make a one run. For the border radius, I'm going to do 50 pixel. And for the border, I don't want any borders, so it's going to be none. I'm going to give it a box shadow of 0 pixel, 10 pixels, 20 pixels as the blur number, and RGBA of 0 0.5. That's going to give me this shadow over there. For the background of this bind, <clears throat> also going to use linear gradient and in that case it's going to be between 6837EE and 0D2B7E and you can change this value if you want you want to make use different colors that's fine and if you save this And because I forget the comma here, it won't show up. It's gonna look like this. Let's do color uh, white, which in that case, I'm gonna put DDD. And also here, I need to change it. Instead of top of bottom, I'm gonna do 45 degree. And this is how it looks like. Also, let's do text transform, uppercase and also letter spacing, one pixel. And this is how it looks like. I think it's a little bit big, so let's get it back to 0 0.75. Yep. Now for the hover effect of this button here, we can select the card BTN, and for the hover pseudo class, we're gonna just change this two color of the gradient. So I'm gonna copy the background. And we're gonna start with this color here. Save it. So when I hover over it, as you can see, the color changed. Now I have my button, when I close it, but now that this is not working yet, because I need to add the Java script effect. This card is not actually, when I close it, it's not closing, because I need to add the JavaScript to this file. To do so, so the whole trick, we're gonna put this card all the way in the top. So if you go for the card here, so it's in position absolute, I can do top, negative 100% initially. And when the user click in this button, I'll bring the top to whatever value I want. So I'm gonna center it to the screen. And then when I click in the closing button, I put it back in the negative 100%. For that, I also need a transition here. So I'm gonna add the transition of one all one second. Okay, now let's work on the JavaScript file. I'm gonna open my main.js. And the beginning, I'm gonna do some variables or constants with the elements that I wanna, gonna need in my JavaScript file. So the first one is the about btn, which is this button here. So about B btn, I'm gonna do document, dot query selector I'm gonna select this button and let's have a class dot about stash btn next I'm gonna copy this the second one is the close btn which is also have a class of close btns this is the two buttons that will control my card now I need also to get hold on the overlay. 
which having a class of overlay. And finally, I want to get hold of the card itself, which is going to call it a card. So what we want to do, we want when the user click in this, the card show up. So we need to add a click listener, event listener here. So about BTN, add event listener, which is the event listener will be clicked. This is the event we're listening to. And we're gonna add an anonymous function here, an arrow function. And for this arrow function, that card itself, I wanna style it. And I wanna multiple styles, so I'm gonna use CSS text which in that case, top will be 50%, opacity will be one, and the transform, translate, negative 50%, translate Y. Okay, let's give it a try. As we can see now, it's it's coming from the top. But now I wanna make it disappear here. Actually, before I make it disappear, I wanna also change the overlay. So I wanna dark the background to be more dark. So that's mean I can access the overlay. And I wanna style it, the background, to be equal RGPA. So I'm gonna overwrite the background value with 0 0.9 opacity. So it's gonna be more darker. So when I click on it, as you can see, the background now get darker. But this is happening so fast, I need to add a transition to it. So the style here for the overlay, let's add a transition to it. I'm gonna do transition. Hold one second, save this, close, refresh the page. Now when I click on it, as you can see, it get dark and it will take one second to do the transition. This is for the overlay and for the, for the about button itself. Now let's talk about the closing button here. When the user close button, add event listener, click on it, I want to run the following functions where the card dot style dot CSS text. In that case, I want to send it back up. So I'm going to do top. I'm actually going to put it negative 200 pixel, 200%. And I wanted the opacity to be zero. So I want to make it disappearing. So, as you can see, however, it's, it's going up so fast. So let's change this to one. Okay. Yep, let's look better. And also, I want the overlay to come back. So the overlay here, I'm going to copy the overlay that I have here, which I make it 0 0.9 opacity. And in that case, I'll bring it back to 0 0.4 as the opacity. So when I click here, click here, perfect. Now let's take a look how this is gonna look in a mobile device. So now when I click on it, as you can see, the card here is not fitting to the screen. Even with the smaller screens, it's not fitting here. So I'm gonna use media query to make it responsive. So I'm gonna select the smaller screen like this. I'm gonna put it on the side. I need to go back to the styling sheet. And at the end of my code, I'm gonna add my media query. And in that case, at media, max widths, Oh, 
of 500 pixels. I want the card to be having widths of 90% of the screen. And now the width, as you can see, is 90% of the screen. Okay. Okay, we have another problem that, as you can see, negative 100 is still showing the card. So what we can do is, and instead of negative 100, put it a little bit up more. So we can actually put it 200. That's mean we have to change it here in our JavaScript file, negative 200 percent and that okay that will work now to to make it fit the height we're gonna play a little bit in the fonts and the image size so I'm gonna target the card image width I'm gonna set it to 120 pixel make it a little bit smaller height uh, 120 pixel and for the margin bottom also I'm gonna make it less which is 0 0.5 RAM okay now it's getting a little bit smaller now also I need to do the same for my heading card heading so I'm gonna select the card heading for the card heading I just need to do change the font size to be 1.4 RAM okay Next, for the card paragraph, I'm gonna do font size one rem. Now I'm gonna select the icons themselves. I'm gonna do select card paragraph icon. I'm gonna do the font size one rem. Gonna make them a little bit smaller. Now I'm also gonna select my social link. I'm gonna do the width 30 pixels. Height 30 pixels, margin bottom will be one rem. Okay, that's much better. For the social icon itself, I want to do the font size 15 pixels. And for the social list, because right now we have a huge gap here, we need to reduce that margin bottom to be one rem actually this is not margin bottom this is actually should be margin left because i want to, to put space between them so it's going to be margin left okay perfect and now that's it it's become responsive now and let's test it for the iphone 6 responsive for a taller screen like an iphone x and it's working perfect you can hit it's coming from the top to the bottom and it's working Okay guys, I hope you like this video and if you do like it, hit the like button and if you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe uh, to get more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.